Hey guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. Today we've got a presentation from you from Mr. Todd Greening. Todd Greening is with Magnus Corporation. They are the producers of a software called MDM. What MDM is, is it's a plugin for SDS2 that allows you to manage all of the model checking things that you need to keep track of. It helps you keep track of your drawings as they go through the process, helps you keep through track of all of that information that you need to know to make sure that that steel is going to be right by the time it gets into the shop. It's a great little piece of software. He walks us through a demonstration of it and I ask him a myriad of annoying questions. So it is a very long video, so we've broken it up into chunks of about half an hour, half an hour and we will present those to you as quickly as I can edit them. This was shot actually several months ago uh, It's with some of our older recording equipment, so uh, you know, enjoy that, but it is uh, it is with Todd Greening, who has probably the best podcasting voice that I've ever heard. So uh, enjoy his dulcet tones. Let us know if you got any questions. And as always, hit those like and subscribe buttons below. We'll see you back here on the Steel Forum. Hey guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. And today we have Todd Greening with us from Magnus Corporation. They are the Canadian distributor of SDS2 and also the seller of one of our favorite little add-ons. It's got the... What is the full name of the, the uh, MDM? It's uh, M model MDM. So model and detailing management module. That's too many M's. I know not <laughs> enough M's actually. Or Well, you, right. There's not, a, there's not enough M's. So we got, we got Todd Greening with us. He is a uh, detailer turned dark side. He's gone over to the software side. Do you still detail from day to day or? No, I haven't detailed in almost 20 years. So how do we get that? Cause I would also like to not ever detail again. <laughs> well, when I first started Detail, I worked for a company called Steltech, and the owner, he received the uh, Canadian distributorship of SDS2. So he opened up another company, and I went, worked, uh, went to work for Magnus. All right. That's, that's and good. the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history. It's, yeah. it's kind of like the, the classic detailing stories. There's, there's no career choices where somebody was like, yeah, I went to high school and I was like, I should be a steel detailer. And <laughs> right. I planned on that. It, no, that's, that's not a thing that happens. It's, <laughs> we ended up here and this is, yeah. this is our story. So, uh, so <clears throat> I, I think you've got a challenging task ahead of you oh. uh, with, with me. Matt has been trying to convert me into a model checker for just about Probably eternity now. now. <laughs> okay. And every time we get into it, I'm like, yeah, but this thing could still be wrong. Or uh, it's particularly the, the materials. It's not the, the members or the connections. It's the, you know, hey, where does this poor stop start? Where does this poor stop stop? All of that stuff. And I'm like, I, I don't know how you check that effectively in the model without wasting time. In what respect? Like measuring things or... The whole, like, in, in, in the drawing, I'm like, okay, it starts at six foot five and an eighth. Highlight, right? right? I can highlight the thing, and then I, I know, and then I, I highlight the other end, and I know, okay, I, I calculate that length, and then I highlight the length. But even in the MDM module, mm -hmm. I have trouble, like, checking off those things. Or when I do check it off, I feel like I'm jumping through maybe too many hoops. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I, I agree at the beginning when we first created MDM, it was a little difficult to check in the model. Uh, actually, now SDS2 has given us a lot of tools. We can add dimensions and model. So we can measure things, of course, and have a, a physical representation of that, that measurement. Uh, also, in the MDM, we give a, a lot of feedback directly in those windows. Now, as far as the material with the materials, I can't get the dimension, say, from the, for the, the start of a pour stop from the end of the beam, but uh, I can get the information about that pour stop. So in conjunction with the tools that SDS2 has provided, we can check in the model. Now, we'll probably, sh I'll show you a little bit, well, a little later, I'm sure, but. Uh, yeah, let's not hide. Let's, let's jump right in. If, uh, if, if you want to share your screen. Uh, sure, uh, share screen. Now, uh, I don't know if this is going to cause an issue. I have a ultra-wide monitor. I don't know if you can see it, if it's causing a distortion. I will, uh, I'll, I'll edit that in the video and I'll just, I'll, I'll scale it down. It'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. So uh, basically we- promises sometimes I can't keep. My video editing skills are still, uh, <laughs> if, if you watch any of the videos, you'll notice uh, my video editing skills are 
uh, they leave a little to be desired, but we're getting there. <laughs> no, it's just because my, uh, my ultra wide is a 21 by nine. Not many people use that. No, it, it is a beautiful thing though. I have considered that format. Yeah, it's, I'll never go back. Ugh. The only thing is they're expensive. Uh, okay, so is there anything particular you want me to show or just from the beginning, let's go? So let, why don't we do what you would do, like a quick demo of the, the module? Because I'm sure there are okay. a lot of people watching who haven't seen the, the, this at all, don't really know. Okay. So basically, uh, as you mentioned, we do, the MDM module is used for uh, checking in the model. So we found at the years ago is that we would, you know, add members in the model, add the material, detail them, and then we would notice little errors in 2D. Say a section size is incorrect. Well, you'd have to go all the way back to the model, change it, re-detail it, re-clean it up, so you're wasting time. A lot of these things could be checked within the model prior to detailing. Now, of course, as the years have gone by, we've added other functionality to it to help uh, you know, in transmittals and revisions, but its primary goal at the beginning was to be able to get rid of all those, those little errors, you know, wrong steel grain. You know, you've detailed something, cleaned it up. I just imagine a truss. You cleaned it up, spent an hour cleaning that truss, and then you realize, you know, the main material grade is incorrect yeah. or the section size is incorrect. So you'd have to go back into the model, repair that uh, error, and then detail it again, clean it up again. So a lot of this uh, stuff is done prior to detailing. Yeah, I would, I would say on average, in, in any given job, we detail any one member at least two and a half times. Exactly. So yeah. we try to, you know, there's times you're, you're going to have no choice of revision or a change order. You're going to have no choice. But uh, as far as the, you know, the, I wouldn't say the day-to-day -day members, but the normal, on, the, on a normal day-to-day -day basis, you want to check as much as you can in the model. Because one day, I mean, as we know right now, model, the model rules. Right, right. And, and it should. It, yeah, you do CNC, it's only from the model. So if that hole is incorrect in 2D, well, you got to go back into the model. So, uh, so yeah, we have a, a, basically a whole tool, tool set. I don't know if I'm sure you can see it here. Uh, that we use. Uh, also, we have a special status display that we use. It's the management module, one that will color code everything based upon its life cycle within the model. Actually, I'm going to grab some members here. I'm just going to just grab these three little members. I'm going to run what's called the update system tool. And it's going to open a window. Now, I just want to show, I'm just going to move that to the side a little bit under the general update tab. So a couple of things I wanna mention is that the MDM module does not lock the member. So if for whatever reason I need to edit that member, it's not necessary, but I can edit that member. It's not locking it. Yeah, this is one of my favorite features. This is one of the things that I saw and I was like, that's awesome. That's the way that SDS2 needs to run in general. Yeah, there, there are limitations to this, of course. You know, if I start changing any of the statuses here, you know, it's now SDS2 has locked this member since it's open. Right. So there are limitations, you know, of course, to what I can and cannot do. Now, having said that, since I've edited or I have these three members, they're listed here on the left, I can at any time get some general information about that. So it's a, 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 a virtual bill of material. So if any, at any time I can instead of editing the member, I can find some information here. Uh, also, a more in-depth as far as general information and the connections. Now, in this case, I don't really have anything changed from user, but it would indicate if, uh, say, the connection was set to a user or if I forced it. It would indicate, so if I actually, I'm going to close this. I'm going to I'm going to change from the auto standard. I'm just going to here. Show a little mayhem. Yeah, just to show. And my 1080 screen is giving me an issue here. There we go. So uh, I'll reselect those members. So as you can see, there's some differences now. In this case, oh, I've selected too many. 
Uh, where is it? Oh, the loads, I should have. If, uh, so I've, you see that they, it's given me the information about the, the end. Also, if I, I'm gonna choose something here. Uh, just trying to figure out what I should change. Uh, because I don't wanna, I wanna put it back to what it was. Because this is a little tool I wanna show a little later. So I'm gonna grab another member. Don't worry, this is just indicating the, the member underneath. Uh, let's find another member. It's a little easier not to. Yeah, the reason these are brown, those members, they're finished. So I just, I know you had a question about revision, so I wanted something in Do you there. have a colorblind mode? A colorblind mode? <laughs> My uh, illustrious partner happens to be colorblind, so some of these... Oh, that's right. Well, yeah, these... I get about six or seven colors in the model before I'm not going to be able to tell any more apart. Now, <laughs> and I think no, is an acceptable answer things. to that question. Yeah, I, I just, the only thing, while well, I bring up the status display now, as far as the colors go, uh, there's so many, you know, priorities. I don't know how many different colors, but you can always change these. Yeah, yeah. well, we need a striping option. Can we do, yeah. Can we do plaid? They've gone to plaid. Oh, actually, in, okay, I'm in 2017, but in 2018, because you know you can color code the ends now. Yeah. Yes, that we, we know. So that might help somewhat. What, what I found when I started trying this out was if I did things in passes, then the change in color wasn't something that was too much of an issue for me okay. so if i went from all one color to all the next color and then went to the next color so if i only had two or three colors active at any given point mm -hmm. it wasn't such a big a big problem it's you know if i started to work my way across and i've got 10 different dimensions of you know color shading because i've got some things checked for connection some things checked for the material grade and member size only and some things are fully released you start to really spread that thin and then I can't tell the color differences anymore. Okay. It's especially bad because you know, you've got multiple shades because it puts that little bit of shadowing in there. So the web and the flange are not necessarily the exact same shade, you know, based on your rotation and things like that. Correct. So it just now, really complicates it for me. Hmm. I just don't know the, the extent that I can mess around with SDS too, because I know of course there are options, you know, for the colors, uh, like if, uh, God. I wouldn't worry about it too much yeah. on my account, though. No, but it's something to think about. I, I'll yeah. be honest, I never even, I think you mentioned it a while ago, but. Yeah, that's something that uh, Nick and I have had to deal with since the beginning is, you know, traditionally checkers make their markups in red, but if you put that on a set of black drawings, I may not see them clearly, but blue mm -hmm. is neon glow to me. So I will spot that from space. Okay. So he's always had to mark his stuff up in blue. And we've caught grief from that about that from uh, some customers because, you know, they've wanted to see some checking markups and we've sent them markups in blue because we forgot <laughs> that's not normal. That's just what we do. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, uh, I want to talk about this afterward. There might be a, a way around that. Yeah, we should. We'll we'll talk about that. No, I, yeah. I, I imagine I've got about a thousand other questions offline too. Right? So okay, so I just want to get through this uh, very quickly. So basically, what we do, you enter a member in the model, or a few members, the the modeler, and once it's complete as far as the engineer drawings. So I've entered these members. I would do what's called sticking. Now that will of course change the uh, color of the member, which indicates it's ready for the next step which is called pre-check. And, and of course, it would sign the name of whoever is on, uh, whoever's doing the work. So in my case, I'm the only one on my network, so I'm the only one with my name there. So I'll That's be doing it. a feature that I think is critically important because I don't trust, as a checker, I don't trust anybody. So right. if Matt marks off that it's correct. I, I want to know that that was just stupid Matt and I can still... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it it's all recorded. So uh, at the next step, so the checker at this point, the model checker would come in and realize, oh, these members are ready for the next step. So they'd run the tool again, and they would use the 
pre-check. So they can do all of them at once or one at a time. So you get some general information. So of course they can, you know, verify in the web rotation, the length, the location in the model. Uh, you can do one at a time or I can do them all at once. So I'm just going to say everything is correct. So I'm going to pre-check it. So now they'll turn another color. So it just indicates that they're ready for the next step, which is the adding of connections or miscellaneous material, bore stops, hangers, whatever the case may be. So uh, of course, the modeler now sees that they're ready for the next step. They would come in, model the connection as per, you know, engineer expects for the project. So they can, you know, say these members have been done. So I'm gonna just click that. I'm gonna say for all these members, the connections are gonna, now I get a warning. Okay, so I have little issues with other members. They haven't gone through enough or uh, enough checks. So I can, in the case, yeah, I'll show you a better example because those members underneath. So, so it's, it's giving you grief because you're saying a connection is okay to another member that is not yet cleared for that check. Exactly. Okay. So that's it. It's checking, say, in this case, if I was to clear B35, this member, the column it's framing to is not checked yet. Now, it's not an issue if I know in this case, yeah, it's fine. I can always bypass that check. So in this case, I'm just gonna bypass any checks. So in this case, it's telling me the other column, C7 is already signed, so it's not a big deal. I can overwrite, say somebody else did it. So for whatever reason, I wanna overwrite it with my name. For whatever reason, they did something wrong. But in this case, it's not, it's fine. So at this point, I don't know if you can hear, maybe if I move that to the side there, oh, there you go. So I have these members, they're ready for the next step, which is the adding of poor stops, you know, uh, web pens, et cetera, whatever needs to be done. Once that's done, they're going to be released for checking in the 3D model. So I am the modeler, I've done my work, I'm going to release them. So at this point, they're ready, they're in white, they're ready for, 3D checking. So now I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm just going to select my columns. I'm going to show you two ways to check uh, the material of these members. So in the case, say it was an infill beam. Uh, and I'm not really worried. I can just click all that material has been checked. It's done. So, you know, very simple. But this one is a little more complicated. So I want to go through it. I'm going to go through each piece of material and, and verify it. So, so can, can I back up just for a second? Sure. Um, because what I'm really interested in, what I struggled with a little bit, was the actual workflow. So yes. what, what are you looking at individually before you press that button? What are the, the views you're looking at? What are the, the things you're editing? What contract drawings do you have open? What's that process before you say, yes, that's good? Well, usually, uh, of course, I think, just about everybody works with two or more monitors. So we do have, say, on a, on a secondary... Not, we don't want to talk to them anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so you would have your PDF of the, the project open, and you're going through, of course, the engineer notes. You know, they want specific types of connections, or in the fabricator notes, you know, we use, I don't know, let's say double clip angles, bolted, bolted. That's our specific uh, set for this. My, my thing is always, SDS2 has a penchant for random unexplained changes to things. Yes. Uh, I'll be honest, when I was working with SDS2, like people complain, but members get marked for detailing. Mm -hmm. I, when I was working, we never paid attention to that. I know what needs to be detailed. Members are marked, uh, so, sorry, model complete when they're done. The details are detail complete. SDS2 is not going to change anything. I know what needs to be detailed. So you are, your, your module does use model complete and it's rigid. It's yes. Once well, you it's say not, it's complete that the model will not put yeah. something that ain't. Well, the only difference is we use the legacy, the old model complete, which, which locks it. The, the new one's terrible. Yeah. And it locks up a, a MDM. I don't know why that's a, it, it locks up everything. We, we yeah. tried to use it, you know, outside of MDM 
and it just everything goes bananas. Yes. So we use the legacy. That doesn't prevent the user from changing anything. I can punch a hole in a beam if it's set to model complete legacy. When it's restrictive, I you know SDS two or the user can't do anything. So how do I know? And this this is uh, you know always been my concern with it. How do I know like that? there's not a mysterious hole in that web that's not supposed to be there. Well, pers okay, if it's that model complete legacy and somebody punches a hole in it for no reason. No, no, no. Let, 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 but before we set it as model complete in the, oh. uh, in the checking okay. process, right. like, do I have to surface on it and then like turn everything else off? How, how do I make that an efficient process to make sure only the things that are done have been done that I want? Okay. So for that, we've, you know, we haven't instituted a, uh, a clear or a set way to do it. That's up to the user. Now, the reason I say that is if, you know, it's, this member is ready for the material checking. So there are several things I can do. You know, people sometimes uh, isolate the member from the rest of the structure and then they'll pull off, you know, their own dimensions that they want. Uh, I don't know where from there, you know, to get certain items to view uh, within the 3D model. So they will use those tools. Now that's not to say that you have to, or some people even now with the, the functionality is to you know, hide every other member. So okay. those functionalities are used. So let me show all the members. Now also, let me get rid of that. Uh, so I always recommend, you know, it's gonna be a little different at the beginning. Uh, try to check everything. After you get a little more familiar with the system, you're going to, you know, uh, I wouldn't say skip, but it's going to be a little easier. So uh, just to get back to this, in the case of the columns, I went through and I, you know, I just cleared them out. They're good. So I'm going to do this member now piece by piece. So there's a tool for that too, the material or the model check. I can select a, um, a piece of material on the member and it will open the uh, model check window. So again, information feedback. So whatever's highlighted on the bottom, these are all the sub marks. And now you can I've, launch right into this from that previous screen yes. too, right? Yes. So if I have, uh, if I can remember, where is it? I guess under material information. Even me sometimes. And then uh, you just double click on. Yeah. There we go. It's been a while, but I still remember some of this stuff from it. <laughs> so you see, that's a perfect example. I used, I, sh I closed the window and I used the tool by itself. Both are correct. It's whatever, you, you know, you want to use. So just let me close this one. And just do it again through this window. I don't know about the power of my PC. So, uh, so now we're going to go check the individual pieces of material. And again, I haven't locked the member. I still can come in here. Know, measure things. I can look at you know the bolt number of bolt rows. I can, if need be, I can uh, you know detail the sub material to take a look at it and show the dimensions and model. I do use those tools when you're checking sometimes. Okay. So yeah, I I don't ever. I, I still like two D D checking. Two D checking. Yeah. Okay. Now that's not to say that you have to go this way at the beginning. You know you want to. A few items that I would always recommend is the pre-check. So I can go through, you know, the material that's given me the piece mark, its length, et cetera. Again, I can use the tools in SDS2. Uh, what are all those arrows? Arrows? The arrows. Oh, these here. The these. Oh, just to, I can toggle through. There's nothing found. So uh, there. if I had different, say, wide flange sections or if I had other members. Oh, so you have multiple selected? Yeah, so I can go through each item. Now I can check, you know, in this case, the quantity on this member or in the entire project. So if I had this member or doubled up, I can check them both at the same time. Okay, I'm with you. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through a couple of these. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put an error on another one because I want to show this as an example for something else here. So let me go to another member. So I want to show a, a new functionality we added. So I'm just going to use this one as a, as a quick example. Now, just to mention, I can change. So I'm just going to 
go under the general update. For whatever reason, if I want to get all the way to release for check in one shot, I can. Now, I'm just going to make sure the bypass check is there. I'm going to go right to release the check in the model. So it just did all of those. So all those checks are done. So if you have very simple beams, you know, you don't want to check these one at a time. You can do a whole bunch. Now, so I'm going to go and I'm going to put, say, an error on this member. Okay, so let's say the wide flange main material is good, so I'm going to hit that check button. Uh, the connections are good, so I'm just going to say they're good. And of course, as I check them, and they're being signed, they're changing color. So these are, oop, cancel, I hit the error button. But let's say for whatever reason, there's a problem on P48, the gusset. So I'm gonna put an error on it. So since I'm the only one here, you know, uh, I'm the only one listed in the, in the uh, user, but I could send it to anybody within the network. Most likely I'd send it back to the person who, who did it, but I'm just gonna use my name and I'm gonna add in an error. So, uh, so play, whatever it should be. I don't know, I forget what was the thickness. Three eighths, let's say it should be a half an inch. Just a, now of course that's gonna affect other things. Uh, should be half an inch as per, you know, whatever it might be. So I'm gonna click okay, so it's added an error to it. Now, what's good about this is I'm gonna close this. I'm actually, I'm going to close this project completely. So I'm going to go to another project. It's going to look exactly the same because I pretty much use the training model everywhere. So I'm actually on another project. So as soon as I initiate any of those commands that have to do with checking, it indicates, oh, there's an error for me to check. So it's also giving me the project since I'm not on that current project. It'll give me the error, the member, and the piece mark. So I, for whatever reason, I can skip this, send it to somebody else, say I'm too busy, send it to somebody else to check. But in our case, I'm actually gonna return to that project. You know, while you're switching back, I got a little story about that. When, when we first got this module from you guys, we were working on training a new employee and I was working on learning how to use this. So as a way to sort of teach us both, I had him put in a model of a job we had already done and he did a whole bunch of stuff wrong. So I had gone through and checked everything and I sent him all of these flags to check. Okay. So then I went back about my business and I was doing a bunch of work. So he goes through and he fixes all of this stuff and then he sends it all back, you know, for, for back checking mm -hmm. checks off that he's done it. So now I have this fictitious job that I do not care about oh. as 500 items for me to review. And it's like, this was a terrible mistake.